Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the lecture. So up to here, we have done everything. The slab reinforcement, the electrical works, everything is completed. Next, what we are supposed to do? We are supposed to do the concreting of the slab. But before that, again, we know since slab is a very critical element, we need to do the checking of the slab, right? We need to check whether the centering, whatever we have put is exactly correct or not. We have to check whether the props, whatever we have put, it is exactly correct or not. We need to check the stability of the formwork. We need to check the reinforcement and whether the cover block has been given, has been given or not. All those checks we are supposed to do. Again, why is that? Because it's, slab is a very critical element. Any failure here will again result in the entire color happen. So we'll start it. So first check if proper cover blocks and chairs are given for the slabs and beams. Right, cover block we have under, already understood. Especially for the slab, the cover block will be 20 mm. So we'll try to see that how the cover blocks will be put up and we have to check whether the cover blocks has been given or not. Good. Next is about the chair. Chair will, anyhow, we have seen that. What is chair all about? If I have a bottom mesh, if I have a top mesh, in order to separate that, we are going to give a chair something like this. You can see it here. I'll draw it here. So something like this, isn't it? So this is called as chair. Your top mesh, your top, top reinforcement will be here and bottom reinforcement will be here, right? So that also we need to check. Check whether reinforcement provided for the beams and slabs are according to the drawings or not. Already for the beam, we already seen that at the time of lowering. But when it comes to the slabs, again, we are going to check so that whatever the spacing was given is exactly correct or not. Whatever the crank bar they have given, whatever the crank length is supposed to be put, everything is correct or not, right? Yeah, next is, you can see it here. Yeah, so these are the cover blocks. You can see these are the cover blocks what we are going to give. And next is take a round through the slab area and check if the beam shuttering, slab centering, props are properly tightened or not. We already seen that, right? We'll take a complete round. Anyhow, uh, we'll be seeing at the time of casting also. I'll be taking the entire round of all the slab, whatever we have take, uh, seen, and we'll try to check that. Next is make sure there is no debris or waste material like paper piece, plastic, good cup papers inside the beam and the slab. Again, here the slab, the slab is very clean, isn't it? Sometimes what will happen, there will be a lot of uh, waste materials, debris and all in the slab. Since all these carpenters, barbenders are going to work, they're going to put all the uh, waste and also due to the cutting of the centering plates and all, there'll be a lot of dust. Again, before pouring the concrete, we want the entire slab to be clean. That is why we are written this point. Again, as a site engineer, you're supposed to do all these things. Make sure for the electrical and mechanical works like electrical conducting, ceiling fan hooks, cut out for the plumbing lines are checked according to the drawings. You can see the uh, electrical work that it has been finished. In the same way, plumbing people, you are going to finish the work. All those things you have to check. Next is speak to the RMC plan guy. Now, what is this RMC? That is a ready mix concrete. When we work in the bigger construction companies, we are not going to prepare the concrete on the site. We'll be ordering it from the batching plant. Right. And whenever we are ordering it from the batching, batching plant, it's not that we are going to order one cube, one M cube or 200, two M cube. It will be like 100 M cube, 150 M cube of a concrete to be ordered if it is a slab casting and all. So if tomorrow is a slab casting, I cannot call the RMC guy today evening and tell him that tomorrow I re require 150 cubic meter for concrete. Because even at his particular site that is in the batching plant, there should be the, there should be aggregate ready. He should be having a fine sand, right? And also the cement and everything he, sh he should be having at his particular batching plant. So that is why if tomorrow I'm, I have a plan to do my slab casting, one or two days before I'll speak to the batching plant saying that, see, on this date, I have a slab casting and make sure that you have all the uh, materials at your site ready and your batching plant is in a working condition, right? And also sometimes what will happen, maybe on the day, whenever you are planned, there might be a maintenance work going on in the batching plant. So again, then you have to shift the date of your uh, concreting work. Getting my point? All these things you should take care of. Yeah. So if next, now let us say if you're working in a small project in a local construction, then we are not going to order the concrete from the batching plant. We'll be doing the hand mix concrete, right? In that case, what will happen? If you're a contractor, you should check how many cement bag is required, how much aggregate is required, how much sand is required for me, right? Again, labors, machine, and everything you need to take care of so that one or two days prior you can plan so that you can stack all the raw materials like cement, sand, and all in your site so that your concreting work will go in a very uh, smooth way. Getting my point? So all these things you need to keep in your mind. Yeah. So you can see here, see, uh, actually, uh, this is one of the slab where we are going to see all the slab casting. Uh, we had planned the concreting of this particular uh, slab. And then one day before we had called, uh, we had uh, placed the order for the cement bag. And you can see the cement bag has arrived the site. And this is how we are stacking the cement bags. 
yeah you can see how this is how the cement bags are stacked yeah now finally you can see it here all these are the checklist now even i also have a checklist with me right now so that we can you know uh, make sure that we are working on a, a real construction site so i have a checklist ready with me i'm i'm a site engineer so i'll be checking all these things so right now i'm showing a different checklist see this checklist is not constant each company have their own way of checking the slabs and all right now i'm trying to show you two different checklist you can see the checklist here again it's written here this is for the form work this is for the rebar and this is general for the form work you have to check whether the dimensions the level and plumb is exactly correct or not you have to check whether the tightness and rigidity cleanliness of the shuttering right then shutter release agent arrangement for the dewatering all these things comes under the former similarly when it comes to the slab reinforcement check the proper bar size and numbers check the cleanliness of your bar check for the cover hooks and binding rigidity right all these things when it comes to the general you have to check what grade of concrete in the drawing you will write you have to make use of m25 grade of concrete then you have to make sure you are ordering a m25 grade of concrete only so grade of concrete quality of the bulk materials whether you are using a plastic sizes or not all those things it will be written again in a big construction company will be having like first inspection second inspection third inspection right so in this way uh, the inspection will happen if everything is okay if your site manager or let us say the engineer in charge is going to or the quality engineer will say okay everything is okay he is going to put a check mark here let us do that yeah so let us say approved for concreting approved for concreting and uh, task start date when you are going to start that you are going to right again then you are going to do all this uh, input like uh, yeah pour start date and time at what time you are going to start and all next you are going to put your sign okay and then finally we'll say okay you can do the concreting everything is according to the quality so in the same way this is how we are supposed again the same way we have another thing this is post concreting that is at once the concreting is done again you have to check whether your uh, curing is done properly or not you can see here no pour start date and time concreting end date number of cubes taken every slump we'll see what is slump and all then method of pouring and vibration how did you pour the concrete what was the, what was the method of vibration what is the needle that you use okay line level and finishing once you pour the concrete whether you have maintained a very good surface or not right all these things you need to take care of then schedule date of form work removal of the site that is about the deshuttering we'll see what is deshuttering and all okay everything will be written right in the same way uh, i'll be showing you one more checklist we'll go to the one more checklist which we already seen that yeah i'll go to yeah for this okay again we know this right we already seen that this is checklist prior to the concreting all these things again it's the same thing okay vibrator is it okay or not needle is it okay or not Mush mixer machine okay again then finally let us say you have done the concreting uh, i mean uh, you have uh, you know uh, i'll write it here my grade of concrete and all so my grade of concreting let us say i want to pour a m20 grade of concrete so my i'll say m25 grade of concrete i'll write m25 then uh, okay wait yeah, it is M25 grade. Total uh, quantity of concrete, let us say uh, I want uh, 150 cubic meter of a concrete. I'll write one cubic meter of concrete. And coming to the date of concrete, today is 20, 23rd March. I'll say tomorrow I have planned a concreting. I'll write 2403 and it is 2022. Got it? Yeah, finally everything is done. I'll put my signature here. Yeah, got it? Done. Finish. Okay, all these things you need to take care of. And also this checklist is again prior to the concreting. That is before concreting, this is the checklist. Then again, we have checklist during the concreting. Okay, again, once we, once the concrete uh, reaches to the site, I'll be taking you to this uh, particular checklist and we'll try to see what exactly is happening according to the checklist. And once everything is done, after the concreting, what is the checklist? That, will, that also we are going to see. Oh, so before concreting, at the time of concreting, and after the concrete, especially in this lab, you have to take care of all these things. Okay. Like I have a checklist ready with me as a site and I'll go to the site. Okay. I'll see. Okay. This is done. Okay. This is also done. Okay. Then this is also done. This is also done. And finally, I'm going to give a signature. Okay. Everything is correct. You can go ahead with this. Okay. And then the site engineer in charge, or maybe uh, someone who is in charge of that site is going to do the execution according to that. Getting my point? Yeah. So I think uh, most of the things we were able to address here. And uh, in the next lecture, yeah. So in the next lecture, we'll try to see the practical video of how a slab casting is to be done. We'll try to see for two different slabs. I'll be taking you to one of a uh, ground floor plus four 
story building slab which we have already seen right from the beginning itself i had taken the image from there that particular site and then when i taught you this uh, one way slab which was in that murdeshwar area where the shiva statue was there for that slab also i am going to show you the concreting work i'll explain in a better way for one of the video next video we can try to see only the videos and how it is to be done so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you